Welcome to Faith Talk with Anita. Thank you for joining me on the journey. Happy Advent and Merry Christmas. As I record this Faith Talk, we are just a few days away from the fourth Sunday in Advent, which this year is also Christmas Eve. So the Christmas season is fast approaching. Now, because of the Advent Christmas overlap this year, I'll focus this reflection on Christmas specifically on the Christmas Mass readings, which have been specifically chosen to help us celebrate the season with greater reverence and enthusiasm. Reflecting on them ahead of time will help us do just that. If you go to the U.S. Bishop's website and look up the Christmas Mass readings, you will notice that there are different readings for each of the specific Christmas Masses. The Vigil Mass, the Mass at Dawn, the Mass during the day, and the Mass during the night. As I read through all the readings, I decided to reflect on the readings for the Mass at Dawn because, in my opinion, taken as a whole, they are the best readings of the day. The first reading comes from chapter 62 of the book of Isaiah. It begins with these words. See, the Lord proclaims to the ends of the earth, say to daughter Zion, your savior comes. So simple and yet so complex. Don't those words just make you feel good? When I hear those words, your savior comes, it brings me a great sense of both relief and joy. Relief because it proclaims to us that our Savior has come. We don't have to wait any longer. And joy because it assures us that God is with us here and now. This was written long before Jesus was born. But it comes from 3rd Isaiah, which Christians understand to be a messianic prophecy. Meaning, we look back at the words of Isaiah and see Jesus, who is Messiah and Lord. The responsorial psalm proclaims, A light will shine on us this day. The Lord is born for us. Don't the words of this psalm sound hopeful? Light is a wonderful symbol. It signifies truth, goodness, understanding, and prosperity. These words, a light will shine on us this day. Like the words of Isaiah, were written long before Jesus, but they are perfect for our Christmas celebration. Jesus whose birth we celebrate is the light of the world, breaking through the darkness so we can see God's truth and love. Jesus is the light that guides us to eternal life. The second reading comes from the letter to Titus. When the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. This is the mystery of Christmas. That on that day in Bethlehem so long ago, God, the creator of all that is, broke through time and space 
to live among us in the form of Jesus of Nazareth. Not because of anything we have done, but despite everything we have done. That is God's infinite love for us. The birth of Jesus that we celebrate on Christmas is God's love in action, which transformed the world and our lives forever. And finally, the gospel reading tells of the visit of the shepherds from Luke's gospel. I love this story of the shepherd's visit because it's our story. The shepherds are us. Luke tells us this. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Let me touch on a few key parts of this story. First, these were shepherds, not elite, not wealthy, not well-educated, not religious leaders. No, they were poor, marginalized, hard-working people. And yet, they were the first to be invited to witness this great miracle. I'm sure they had no idea what to expect when they accepted that invitation. They must have been intrigued, curious, and a bit in shock at their angelic visitors. They must have known it was a sign of something significant because I assume when they set off to see this mysterious event, they left their precious sheep alone in the field, which they would never have done in normal circumstances. And we are told they went in haste, as fast as they possibly could, not wasting any time. This was truly the biggest thing that had ever happened to them. And yet, at the same time, what they witnessed was a very normal event. Babies are born every day. But somehow they knew this birth to be different. Somehow they knew this experience would be life changing for them. Just as it is for us. The birth of Christ in that stable in Bethlehem so long ago was the greatest event in the history of the universe. God, the source of all that is, entered humanity. Let me say that again because we tend to take it for granted. God, the source of all that is, entered humanity. Our creator became one of us. My friends, we all know that Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Jesus. But do we take the time to really contemplate what that means? On that day 2,000 years ago, God changed everything. 
we must not allow this holy day to pass without pausing to stand in awe of what happened at that moment. On Christmas Day and throughout the Christmas season, I urge you to step outside of all the holiday excitement and truly reflect on what we are celebrating. Take it all in and let the wonder and awe fill your heart, just as it did for those shepherds. Now, after witnessing the child in the manger, the shepherds returned to their homes, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. But knowing these were just normal human beings, like you and I, I wonder how long their enthusiasm lasted. Did they continue to share this amazing experience for the rest of their lives? Or like many of us, did the excitement eventually wear off? Did they begin to take their experience for granted, settle back into their normal lives and go on as usual? I want to believe that the amazement and their evangelization work lasted for the rest of their lives, which is exactly what we should strive for. The Feast of Christmas calls us to be witnesses of the presence of God here and now in our lifetime and to be so moved by God's presence that this miraculous event changes our lives forever. My friends, the miracle of Jesus' birth is something that we cannot allow ourselves to take for granted. We must hold on to that excitement and reverence throughout the year. Long after this holiday season comes to an end and we return to our ordinary lives, we must, like the shepherds, continue praising and glorifying God for all that we have seen and heard. The last thing I want to focus on is Mary's response. Luke tells us that Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. When I picture this in my mind, I see Mary silently holding her infant in her arms, just gazing upon him and wondering what it all means. Who is he and what will he become? It reminds me of the song, Mary Did You Know? Now, I know there are people who don't like this song because they see some of the words as challenging orthodox theology. But I really love it because it illustrates what Luke tells us. Mary, unaware of the magnitude of this moment, pondered what it might mean. Don't you wonder what was going through her mind? Listen to these words and try to put yourself in Mary's place as she sat in that stable, holding her precious little baby. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. 
Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. My favorite lines in the entire song are, when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. And that sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Isn't it beautiful? Again, try to put yourself in Mary's place. I just don't know how she could possibly have known the magnitude of what was happening and who her child was at that moment. We have to remember that the resurrection didn't happen for another 30 years. And it wasn't until that miracle that the people could even begin to take in the truth of who Jesus was. So in that stable in Bethlehem, Mary could only wonder and wait for it all to unfold. But my friends, we do know the entire story. We know that Mary's little baby is indeed the great I am. The question is, what will we do with that knowledge? Will we go forth praising and glorifying God? Or will we celebrate Christmas as just another fun holiday to gather with family and friends and eat a lot of delicious food? Will this Christmas be a turning point in our lives? Or will it be just another blip on the yearly calendar? Will the new year find us moving on to other things? Or will our hearts still be filled with the enthusiasm, joy, and awe that this miracle awakens in us? My friends, in these Christmas Bible readings, we hear the good news. News that can transform our lives. The message is clear if we but listen closely and take it to heart. Your Savior comes, a light to shine upon us. Not because of any righteous deeds we have done, but because of God's mercy and love. Let us go then in haste to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. Like Mary, let us keep all these things, reflecting on them in our hearts. And when this Christmas season comes to an end, let us continue to glorify and praise God for all we have heard and seen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, we thank you for your presence in our world. We pray that we might witness your light shining brightly throughout these holy days, filling our hearts with wonder and awe. May we be truly changed by our celebration of the Christmas mystery and share our joy with all those we meet, glorifying and praising God all the days of our lives. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I wish you and yours a very blessed Christmas season. Please share this with others and join me for my next Faith Talk. In the meantime, you will be in my prayers. May God bless you.